Sunday, August the 11th, 1968. The very last train to operate on standard gauge track hauled by a British Railways steam locomotive. It ran from Liverpool to Carlisle and back over the Pennine. Watching the trains go out, watching the trains go out. I'm such a wild sort of devil may care, worse than the tops up in Leicester Square, wearing my hat on the side, standing there ruined, no doubt. You can ask all the guards, it's not women or cards, it's through watching the trains go out. Why are we all so excited by steam? A boy's young passion, an old man's dream. Steam, steam, beautiful steam. We won't be so sorry to part with the lorry as now when we're parting with steam. Quick, out with your vest pocket Kodak, on with your long focus lens. This is part of a travelling exhibition of old and new railways. Eighteen fifty five, a famous Victorian painting by Abram Solomon. She sat in a first class carriage, and her questioning eyes were sweet when her hand was asked in marriage by the youth on the opposite seat. Oh, think, said her elderly father, before you become man and wife, that this is a railway journey, but yours is the journey of life. At an exhibition like this, the railway disease is caught early. It's quite harmless. It starts with train spotting, goes on into the dependable world of technical terms. Flanged wheels on a fixed rail, blast pipes, coupled driving wheels, and the balancing of revolving and reciprocating parts. <coughs> the Stockton and Darlington opened in 1825. The Liverpool and Manchester, opened in 1830, engineered by George Stevenson. There he is, with Chat Moss behind him. The great railway pioneers, Richard Trevithick, the Cornishman. And for me, the greatest of them all, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, visionary artist and engineer the Leonardo of the 19th century. The first trunk railway of the world we hail. London is linked to Birmingham by rail. Euston's Greek portico was built to be the gateway into Midland industry. To this great hall, the merchants then would come and wait until the train was called for Brum, in dignity and comfort. Even we are dignified and dainty, you can see. A cigarette? Let's go along to tea. After the toilet, what a joy to find a carriage where one's head can be reclined just at the comfy angle. <laughs> Railway travel is much more comfortable than any other kind. And when I see motor cars going along on a train like this, I thank God the cars haven't got any drivers. That's where they all ought to be. For main roads breed anxiety, tension, anger, fear, hate. And railways are relaxing things.
They always were cheerful. I'm told that in the mid-70s, we will have trains going at 150 miles per hour or more. But I don't think it's the speed that matters. It's the release from tension, the thrill of seeing real country, which you do see from the train. And for some of us, there will always remain memories of the hiss of steam, the sudden roar, the triumphant scream of the whistle. Smuts and the grimy majesty of the whole thing. How did that music hall song go? Watching the trains go out, watching the trains go out. I kick up the devil, I paint the town red. I'll go to the dogs through the life that I've led, slapping my leg with my cane. Standing there, ruined, there's no doubt. You can ask all the guards, it's not women or cards, it's through watching the trains go out. Ah, yes. Railways forever. 